Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today in this video, I'm going to mention some things that you should be aware of before coming to Korea to teach. Now, if you can't um, be like this, I guess, or if you can't satisfy these type of, uh, not requests or requirements, but if you can't see yourself being this type of person, then maybe teaching in Korea is just not the best thing for you. So let's go ahead and get started with the first one. The first one is, if you're not patient, if you are not a patient person, please do not come here to teach, okay? Now, you need patience not only for the students, which you could probably assume because the students are learning English, which means that their English might not be that good. So obviously, you would have to be patient with them, communicating with them, as well as, you know, teaching them and stuff. However, this also goes for the teachers. So you are going to be working with, or most likely going to be working with a Korean English teacher if you are teaching here in Korea sometimes <laughs> Not always. My English teachers are fairly good at English, but sometimes you will come here and realize that your English co-teacher doesn't actually speak English all that well. So they might know English grammar so much better than you, okay? <laughs> or um, they might be really good at explaining these grammar points and things to students in Korean. However, when it comes to general conversation, there are many possibilities for miscommunication communication. So it takes a lot of patience to work with someone whose first language isn't English and that goes for anywhere in the world. So over the years I have learned how important patience is when it comes to teaching in Korea not only as a teacher but also as just communicating with your co-workers. The next one, you shouldn't be a teacher here in Korea if you're just coming here to be in Korea. So I feel like there are a lot of people who just love the Korean culture and who just want to find an easy way to come here to work so that they can be a part of the Korean culture and, and can make Korean friends, I can go to K-pop concerts and like just all this type of stuff. Um, don't just come here just to have fun, okay? You are here to do a job still at the end of the day. And I know that there are a lot of jobs that just typically want a foreign face. Like they don't really care if you know how to teach or if you know like the process of teaching or anything like that. They just want your face to be in the classroom. I know that there are a lot of schools that are like that. However, there are some schools that you actually have a lot of responsibilities like my school. So you actually have to teach. You have to prepare these good lessons, good engaging lessons. You have to be in charge of preparing speaking tests and administering speaking tests and things like that. So don't come here thinking it's just gonna be all fun and games and you're just gonna have so much fun, you know, learning about the Korean culture and being immersed in the Korean culture um, and then just completely forget about the actual job that you apply to do here. So if you're gonna come here just to have fun and stuff, that maybe Korea I mean it could be the place for you because there are jobs like I said I just want your face they don't really care about your credentials um, but you don't know what school you're going to get placed into and you can't exactly ask the interviewer like is this job gonna make me work like do I actually have to do stuff do I actually have to teach so you can't just straight up ask the interviewer this question so if you're coming here to teach be prepared to teach um, if you're prepared if you're overly prepared that's much better than you just thinking you're gonna come here and just have all fun and games so the next thing is about flexibility especially when you're working in a public school here and even more especially <laughs> if you're working in a crew uh, in a public middle school here and I say this because in a public middle school there are so many activities there's so many festivals there's so many school programs all these things that will interfere with your original schedule okay and you just have to be prepared to move your your classes around you need to be prepared to not have class which is always great the most classes I have a day are five and that's what I'm used to having but if classes get moved around it can be bumped up to six maybe even seven classes a day and that is is exhausting not only for my mind because I am an introvert but also for my voice like just talking and talking and talking for seven periods is exhausting but when you work here I guess pretty much like any job you have to be prepared for that um, but definitely in the public middle schools things just really get changed around a lot and yeah you can't be I guess you really can't be that upset about it so the next one I think is just a general thing and like if you don't have this then I don't even know how you work in 
anywhere. You have to be able to receive and uh, 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 accept, I suppose, constructive criticism because typically you are not just teaching your own group of students and they're just specifically yours and nobody else teaches them English. No, it's usually not like that. It's usually you and a co-teacher will be in the classroom together when you are teaching but when those students are not with you, they are being taught by the Korean English teacher. So typically, for me at least, I see a group of students once every two weeks because our school is huge. I have like over a thousand students, so I'm only able to see each class once every two weeks. But the Korean English teacher is seeing them three times every week. So they kind of have a better understanding of those students. They know them better. They know their learning styles better, et cetera, et cetera. So if you do a lesson and you have this whole plan planned out and the Korean co-teacher kind of suggests something or makes some type of change to your lesson, you have to try to accept it. Now, you can ask about it, like why? Why do you think I should change it like this? Or, you know, why do you think this way is better than what I originally planned? And maybe they will explain it to you. Um, some teachers, I'm just gonna go ahead and put it out there. Some teachers don't like for us foreigners, or maybe any teacher, I shouldn't just say foreigners, they don't like for us to question them, especially if they are older, especially if they have been working longer than you, whatever the case. I am a questioner, okay? <laughs> if you ask me to change something, I usually, not always, usually want to know the reason behind it, especially when I put my hard work and dedication into my lesson plan and you want to change it all up. Like, I just, I just want an explanation. Now, I don't always ask for an explanation, but I do sometimes, and it doesn't always go over well. <laughs> so yeah, you have to be prepared for stuff like that. You have to be able to just accept constructive criticism sometimes, and even if sometimes you don't agree with it, sometimes you just need to bite your tongue and just do it, okay? And like, if you're not someone who's able to do that, maybe this isn't the best place for you to come and teach. Okay, so as some of you know, my mother is Korean, and I do feel like that kind of helped me to adjust to the culture a little bit, but there were still things that my mom, she's very like Americanized Korean, I think. Like there are some things about her that are super Korean, but a lot of things are very Americanized Korean, so. It was still a lot I didn't really know about the Korean culture here, especially the Korean work culture. Um, so yeah, when you come here, there will be a lot of things, especially in the workplace, um, that are very different culturally. So there is kind of a fine line though sometimes, because when I first moved to this school, I was such a like, yes ma'am type of teacher. I Anything they wanted me to do, I was like, okay, 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 okay. It didn't matter like how busy my schedule was or whatever the case. Uh, eventually, I got to the point where I would start questioning things and now I think they're starting to second think asking me to do things or, <laughs> you know, stuff like that. So there is a kind of a fine line between like just doing things because you are a flexible person, you're trying to be a good co-worker, you understand the culture, and you not wanting to do things because you're trying to not over, you know, be walked all over or um, be overworked or anything like that. So, gosh, I hope that makes sense. <laughs> Alright you guys, so that is all I want to say in this video. I do hope it was a little bit helpful, especially for those of you who are planning to come out here to work in Korea. Um, definitely things to consider and think about before coming out here. All right, so if you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I will really appreciate it. <laughs> you guys take care and I will see you in my next video. Bye.